Hello everyone, I'm Tom Douglas, the Superintendent of Schools of Horsehead Central School District. Today we wanted to bring you a presentation about a very important topic for the district and the community of Horseheads. Most importantly, we've been talking over the past year about Horseheads 2030 and we have just transitioned it to Horseheads 2030, Building Our Future Now, to emphasize our new mission of Explore, Empower, Excel for our students of Horseheads and most importantly for the future of our generations here in the community. Our capital referendum is scheduled for an October 17th vote date from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the High School South Gymnasium only. The reason for this one polling location is to make sure with a capital project of such a nature that we fully comply with the expectations of education law and education voting requirements for a school capital project. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the capital project uh, presentation that we have been giving to many of the local organizations. As we go through the presentation, we also have a PDF or an electronic PowerPoint connected to this video so that you can see each of the slides that I'm talking about so that you'll have plenty of time to review it. First of all, each of the scopes are individual to the buildings with transportation there is going to be roughly about $4.3 million of scope work for that area with mechanical systems upgrades, uh, phone upgrades, emergency lighting, critical infrastructure upgrades, as well as roof and also parking lots and traffic uh, updates for the transportation department, which is 100% aidable by the state. Then, as we look at each of the elementary schools, roughly each of the elementary schools will have the similar type of scope between mechanical systems, roof upgrades, technology upgrades, traffic flow, playgrounds, ceiling and lights, and a variety of individual building needs according to our building conditions survey, which is required for us to complete by the, to the state every five years to make sure our facilities are up to date and well maintained. Now, at each of the elementary schools, roughly, they'll have about the same dollar amount, somewhere between four and a half to almost uh, five and a half million dollars of scope work. The primary purpose there is to make sure that our building envelopes, as well as major uh, infrastructure items that are really ending the useful life of their service to the district, are in need of repair. With that being said, our focus will take care of those daily items that normally would come out of our daily uh, yearly school budget. So we just wanted to make sure that people understand that these are really quintessential items that need to be addressed at each of the elementary schools. As we move from the elementary schools and their basic uh, upgrade scopes, we go to the middle school and the intermediate school complex. And everyone knows that the traffic pattern and the traffic flow in and out of the Sing Sing Road complex uh, is one that has been of a major issue. And our Board of Education agreed that this needed to be something that was addressed as soon as possible. We have attempted to try to solve some of it at this point, but we will need a capital project to basically uh, bring up to date our transportation flow in and out of the building. And with that, we also have to look at some of the classroom upgrades in the district in the area of technology, in the area of arts, and in the area of sciences to bring them current. There are a wide variety of other scope items that you can see in our presentation from mechanical systems, roofs, technology upgrades, lighting, uh, electrical upgrades, and the like. Our task as a Board of Education and Administration is to make sure that we try to address the needs of the district, address the needs of the infrastructure, and move the community and its schools forward. So as we address the middle school intermediate school, that has a larger price tag to it because it also deals, starts to deal and address one third of our student body. And now where the major uh, influx of renovations and updates will take place initially in our capital referendum is the high school. That high school has a a very substantial price tag to it of near 53 million and that will not cover the full renovation of the high school but it will start the process of a roof mechanical systems traffic flow and the biggest thing is that we wanted to address according to the board and a lot in the community that we have a unified identified secured point of entrance into the school in addition one of the big challenges is to make sure 
that we also have a traffic flow outside of the school that's conducive to the, the volume that we have at the school district, but also with the student traffic flow inside the school. Currently, we have a reverse question mark where basically the students have only one direction that they can really flow in the building. And with passing times, the hallways become choke points because you are really like a fish swimming upstream against the current as the students are heading in both directions. This project hopes to start to alleviate that situation as one of the goals that was given to us, as well as we have to really look at how do we address our mechanical systems. Again, you're hearing the same scope over and over again because these issues have not really been addressed in the wide scale format that they need over the last 30, 40, 50 years. That does not mean that the district has not been doing its due diligence in making sure that they keep up the facilities. Our maintenance staff, our custodial staff, our, our support staff has done an amazing job with the very little resources that they have. But at this point, we need to start addressing all of our scope items and make sure that we avail ourselves of state money instead of using it directly out of our budget. So at the high school, they have the largest need. And one of the big things is the high school is very landlocked. We have a very limited opportunity to use our extracurricular space as well as our physical education space outside in a safe and secured area that's also up to date and current with the trends of the area as well as across the state. In this project, we will have a multi-purpose facility for athletics, extracurricular, and even also community use. Uh, that will be able to go not only during the daytime hours, but also in the evening hours with a uh, lighted surface. So that is also within this scope. And that is something that we've heard over and over is a potential need and a want, but also will help the district and the community moving forward and being competitive. So as you look at all this project, a lot of people will ask, what does it look like and how do we know? We have a newsletter coming out to you that will have the, basically all the drawings, conceptual drawings in it, but it also has, as you go through it, some of the conceptuals of the unified entrance and how it's built with safety and security in mind. You will also be able to see how we are trying to address the traffic flow with a cutover uh, hallway. Uh, in the center courtyard of the high school, as well as a new state-of-the-art library that helps our students be prepared for their life beyond school as well, as we try to develop more of a college atmosphere even in the high school. And this is also something that will be beneficial for the students during the day, as well as something that can be available for our community in the evening as well, so that the school becomes a community resource and not just a school for the purpose of education, because we're all in this together. So as you go through that, one of the last things is on the educational piece is that in the high school, part of this number will roughly update or enhance about 75% of our educational spaces. And that's the most important thing that we do. With that educational space, the renovations and upgrades, right now, currently, a lot of our classrooms are undersized according to state recommendations. One of the biggest things when anybody says it is the total price. When you put every single building, everything we're doing, whether it's a renovation and addition, whether it's a repair, whether it's safety, security, roofing, whether it's paving, whether it's parking, all of that has a cost. And for this total capital referendum, as you will see in the PowerPoint, it has a total of $94,685,637. Now, when somebody hears that number, they're gonna say, what? How are we going to pay for it? That's the biggest thing. The board really wanted to make sure that we explained to you where the expenses went, and one of our charts will show you where each of the uh, percentages of the expenses goes in the district. But on top of it, it also shows you a pie chart of where we are getting the revenue. And roughly 98% of this revenue for this project is going to come from either our retiring debt within our budget, from the $10 million in our capital reserve fund that was authorized by the voters, and over 70% uh, roughly coming from state aid, which when people ask, what's state aid? Well, state aid is tax money, but it's tax money we have paid in over each year, each decade, several decades into the state. And no matter what, every year, the state is going to allocate anywhere from 600 or more million dollars out for other school districts and municipalities to do upgrades, providing they go through a voting process. 
For here, for Horseheads, we've been funding every other school's updates for the past several decades. For here in Horseheads, we're asking for roughly 70% to come from the state, the other 28% to come from either our own capital reserve or our retiring debt in our budget, and we're, we would end up looking for a very minimal impact, hopefully to our local tax base, of no more than 2% of the total cost. But what does that mean in taxes? Well, what that means in taxes is at a very conservative, because I always believe you plan for the worst situation, which what if interest rates were at the highest rate? Uh, what if the project wasn't funded at the right percentage that you're telling us? We're trying to be open and transparent. We've asked our physical advisors to make sure they were the most conservative in their estimate, and they delivered a very conservative estimate, assuming that the interest rate was at 4.5%, when right now it, school districts' interest rates are running at 2 or just slightly below 2%, and this is the time for the best benefit. So a conservative estimate of 4.5% interest with a 98% aidable project would yield that we would have the most conservative tax levy increase potential of 1.87%. We know that the state has regularly provided economic investments uh, to certain areas across the state, whether it's Buffalo for the billion dollars or $500,000 for economic development in key identified regions. And just recently, the Southern Tier was identified to receive $500 million. And you're seeing some of the benefits from that, from that two-year imposition of that $500 million at our airport, where there is about a $60 million renovation to bring economic investment into the community. You're also seeing from that same 500 million, 25 million being invested in downtown revitalization of Elmira. And just recently, $10 million was announced for Watkins Glen for economic investment. But what about Horseheads region and Horseheads school district and community? This is the question that we have to look at. We regularly pay taxes into the state for decades. And those taxes end up going each year, some 600 million plus every year goes to other municipalities and other school districts. We've seen in the area, Corning's been renovated, Elmira's been renovated, Watkins Glen, Bath, the list goes on. But Horseheads has never availed itself really of the vast resources of the state. This project tries to turn the tide and bring your investment of your own personal hard earned taxes back to Horseheads with a small investment. So when somebody hears that number, the one question that immediately pops to mind is, how much is it gonna cost me? How much does that percentage equate to my personal situation? Well, we wanted to make sure that you're aware that anything approved on October 17th, if we put the finances in place, will not take effect for roughly a full five to six years. So in the year 2018, you'll see no potential tax impact. In the year 2019, for a $100,000 home in the district, the potential cost on our rate would be no more than 35 cents. In 2020, that would be 35 cents plus an additional $11.23 because there will be a cumulative factor each year. And in 2021, there would be an additional $11.23 and five cents. And then finally, in the last year, in 2022, there would be a, an additional $10.17. But what does that mean on a total for a $100,000 home? The yearly cost in 2022 on a $100,000 home would be no more than $32.80. And that's the most conservative estimate. In other words, as we plan for the potential worst, that's what our physical advisors is telling us would be the highest amount there's a strong possibility that it could be less depending on the interest rates and the aidability, which again, we took the most conservative route. So we hope that you see that we have tried to make sure to keep the fiscal impact as minimal as possible for the best investment. So over six years, it will take to get to that maximum uh, investment of $32.80 for a $100,000 home. So I hope you can see that's one of the reasons why we wanted to be straightforward with how much it would cost for such a major investment into the community and the region. Remember, we're the only ones that will take care of horse sets.